Welcome everybody to the Crochet Crowd. I have an entry level beginner, absolute beginner knit project for you. This is an ear warmer. Now, I really learned a lot in this thing and one of the goals I wanna tell you right now, do not set yourself up for failure if you're new knitter or you're still relatively new to get perfection. My edges are a little bit crude, but I'm learning and this is the whole point of this kind of exercise. So you're gonna be able to learn some great things in this particular um, uh, tutorial. Learn how to cast on. You'll learn the knit stitch pretty pretty good because it's the whole thing. You'll learn how to do a knit two together to reduce stitches and then you're gonna learn how to knit uh, front and back uh, increase in order to get the stitches to be bigger. So what it happens to be is a whole thing that is just sewn together. So you'll learn how to do the whip stitching to finish it and then weave in your tails and obviously to do the bind off as well. So it's a really great entry level um, knit project and you have something real to show at the end. And you can also see that in your work, you'll see yourself getting a little more, more confident and your hands are gonna work through this pretty easily. So we're gonna have lots of great tips and we're gonna go to the studio now and I'm gonna show you this particular uh, project and I'm pretty proud of myself. I'm not a great knitter, I'm relatively new at it. So to have something actually finished and something that's wearable and fits like a glove for adults, this is a great little ear warmer to start with. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends at yarnspirations.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Today is the beginner ear warmer. This is in knit format using a four and a half millimeter size US 7. On the back of my needles, I have glued felt balls here so it doesn't bang on the table as I'm teaching you today. And those are just some Susan Bates here that I'm using. So we're gonna begin. You'll need a tape measure in order to do this particular project because you need to do some certain things. And I'm gonna teach this from a beginner level perspective because that's what the pro uh, pattern is promised. There's some stuff in the pattern that I don't know exactly what it is, but when I get there, I'll look it up on YouTube and then I'll help teach you that. I just can't remember off the top of my head. So without further ado, let's get right into it and let's grab our knitting needles. I am going to use a discontinued yarn. This is Red Heart Heat Wave. If you have this yarn in stock, it's about the same uh, information as far as thickness of the Peyton's Canadiana. And this, when it gets out into the light, it warms up of 12 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, so when you're outside in the daylight, this yarn actually heats up a little bit and it's kind of like really great technology. So this is great for me and I will be knitting with this today. So let's get ourselves started. We're gonna have the yarn. I'm filming at 7.30 in the morning. Hurricane Ian just blew through Fort Florida last night. So I'm a little worried I haven't been up all night. So we're going to just create a slip knot. So to do this, you'll put the yarn in your hands and you'll just point. And you're going to point and put the yarn over top of your finger twice. Remember that we have tutorials available for stuff like this, just individual tutorials. So let's do it again. So point and wrap twice. And then just grab both of the strands and just open your hand and close. Okay wrap twice, close your hand. I now want you to take the strand that's on the back side here and I want you to move it up over top here. If you have a better way of doing a slip knot, then you can do so. Once you have that done, you're gonna take the new back one, pick it up and go over top of your finger. I'll demonstrate one more time. And there's your slip knot. So point, wrap twice, pinch. Back of the hand, and then over. And we're gonna grab just one of the needles and we're going to insert it into the slip knot. And when you pull this down, don't pull it to the point that it's gonna be so tight that you can't move it on your knitting needle. So keep it so it can move up and down easily. So let's cast on 20 stitches. There's currently one because that was the slip knot and now we gotta do 19 more. I prefer in my cast on a twist and transfer. So what you're going to do is that you're gonna take the other needle that I'm wiggling here on the right and you're gonna go into that same slip knot and when you go in there, you're just opening that knot so both of the needles are touching inside. And so you'll just switch it back like this. So this needle on the right should be on the back. So let's put the yarn in my hand. So I scoop it with my pinky and I wrap just like that and then I just kind of open my hand and I make sure that it goes over top of my fingers like this. Okay, so I want it over so I can use this finger to, to put it on. So I just scoop it and you can do many different ways as long as it goes over top of your 
feeding finger. Okay. So once you have that done, and remember we have tutorials available on these simple little steps. So you're just gonna take this yarn and you're gonna wrap it around the needle that's in the back side. So this one. So wrap around and come down and sink it between the two needles. You're going to shift the right needle down and when you shift it, you're gonna be picking up the yarn that you just wrapped with your needle and you're just gonna push up forward like this. I'll demonstrate this several times. You're gonna let a little bit of slack, so you're gonna pull on this, so pull it out towards you. And what you're doing is you're gonna move these needles and use the needle on the left to sink underneath and collect this off this needle. This causes a twist when you go to do this. It takes a bit of practice, but once you get a hold of it, it's easy. So once it's on this needle, you can just shift it down and release this needle out. And now you have two stitches. So let's do it again. So you're gonna get the new one and go up inside on the back. Wrap the yarn around the back needle and shift down. You're gonna come and push the needle up, give it a bit of slack and use this needle to scoop it off by rotating this and coming up underneath and shift it onto that needle and pull out. I'll demonstrate this three more times. So in, wrap the back needle. Down, a bit of slack, and then use this needle to scoop it up. So you're causing a twist to happen. This is gonna be a very tight cast on, but once you get past the first row, you're going to notice that this will relax a lot. So you're gonna think that it's not gonna be very big until you get to the, sec, uh, the next row, which is row number one. So it's a nice, tight, um, really good looking edge that you're doing. So this is the last time I'll demonstrate it so you can put me on pause. We do have video chapters, so you can scroll back if you want to, and you'll see that in the video description if you need it. So I need you to keep casting on until you see 20 of these loops on to this needle and I'll be back in just a moment. So I now have 20 loops on to this needle so you can just count and make sure. We're now going to begin row number one. Row number one is pretty much the foundation of the way that we're gonna do it. We're only gonna do the knit stitch through this whole thing and when we have to do the increases or the decreases that's when it will change just slightly but it's still gonna be the knit stitch. So let's begin row number one and you're going to start with the knit stitch. So you're gonna go in and two the first stitch so that you're coming in from behind and you're opening that stitch up and you just want to be able to knit stitch it. So just like you cast it on, we're going to do the same thing. So you're just going to come around the back needle, move the needle down and collect. And instead of putting it back onto this needle as a cast on, you were just going to slide what you just did off the needle. So you just transferred it over and you are just made a knit stitch. So you're going to do the next one. The knit stitch is pretty fast stitch generally. And you just wrap the back needle, shift down. And once you confirm that it's on to this needle, shift up and pull off. Notice how I'm using this finger here to kind of stabilize it. So when I pull, I'm not pulling everything off. Just the stitch I want to work with. You have to move these up on this needle to get it easier and you're going to notice after you do row number one that everything will become a lot looser which is what you're looking for. Okay so let's put that back in and try again. Just be patient if you drop the stitch do not panic just hold you just move yourself like a surgeon just very carefully. And you're going to work your way all 20 of those stitches as a knit stitch. So the reason why I'm, I'm I see how much distance there is, there's too much distance between my hand. So I want to just move my hand up to provide better control. 
And after you get the first row done, as I mentioned several times already, it gets a lot easier. And you're gonna find your rhythm. Remember, this is not a race. Knitting does take longer than crochet, but you shouldn't compare the journey because the stitch work will be completely unique in comparison to crochet, because we are the crochet crowd after all. Okay, so you continue to do that. So what I want you to do is put the video on pause now, get yourself all the way across, and then we'll talk when we get back to the other side and I'll see you on the last stitch. So I'm getting on my last stitch, still continuing to do the knit stitch right into the end. And then that's it. So this needle is empty. So you're gonna notice after you just did that, you can stretch this much further and it's a lot more looser than it was. So you're gonna just switch it back to your left hand. Remember in knitting tutorials, I can't teach um, left-handed with the video trick. So it has to be, I can only teach right-handed. So now you're gonna restart. So we're gonna start another row, just exactly what you just did. So come in behind with the knit stitch and begin. And you'll notice that it's a lot easier to slide the loops off now, now that you did row one already. And you continue to knit stitch yourself all the way across. So people email me and say, I should have learned Continental because I'm a crochet. Learn it um, knitting how you prefer. Okay, so a lot of people will have advice on what works for them, which is great. Um, but ultimately you have to decide if you want to learn Continental, there are great hosts here on YouTube to do that. I'm doing what you, you're, um, is referred to as English knitting. There's other methods of the way the wrapping is happening as well. Pinch and throw, like you just hold on and then you throw it over. You can do that. My mom taught me that way as a kid. You can do that. But um, I've learned over the years that I'm kind of holding it the way I do with crochet so that it's in my hand and ready to go. And so that will help you speed up as well. And you have to trust in your hand too that the yarn will not fall out. And just kind of relax and go with the flow. Things like anything take time. So we're coming near to the end of the row and I'm gonna give you a set of instructions and then you're going to do that and then you'll meet me back here um, in just a few seconds after that where I'll have that done where I gotta do my homework off camera and get that tape measure ready because you're gonna need that for the next part of this tutorial. Okay. And you're right to the end. So you just now have learned the knit stitch and you can see that it's even more open and so what you need to do at this point is that you need to continue to knit stitch back and forth until you get a certain amount of inches so you want to do it so that you get three inches to get your tape measure so you have to have three inches already done and then that's where you're going to pick me up so you're working behind the head at this moment and then we're going to start um, doing a decrease to come around to the side of the head to the front and so what i want you to do is do the knit stitch back and forth until you get three inches done I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm now at my three inch mark and I can just take my tape measure and measure I'm at three inches. So now I wanna shape the top as follows and it's going to be a total of four rows. So now that we know it's four rows, what I wanna do is that I wanna put one, two, three, and four. And then I'm going to make a little checklist for myself every time that I pass it. So currently we're sitting at 20 stitches. So right now we're at 20. So whenever we do row number one, row number one, we have to knit two together in order to reduce a stitch. So we're on the first row here, I'm going to put together. And then the other three rows that are left are just the regular knit stitch. So what I want to do is that after you do it once, you're going to have then 19 stitches. And then you'll do that, that sequence again, and then you will have um, 18 stitches. And what we need to do is that we need to continually do this until we get ourselves down to nine stitches. Okay, nine is your magic number. So what I would do for myself is just kind of keep my pen in, uh, handy and just kind of check it off as I go. And I'll show you the first row of knitting two together in order to keep this process going. 
So the pattern says K2, which means knit two, and then it says K2 together, and then knit to the end of the row. So let's start, and we're going to K2. So we're gonna knit two stitches uh, in a row. So just one, and do the next one, two. So that's K2. The next one is knit these two together as one. So instead of just going into the one stitch like we have been, we're gonna collect two of the loops. So it's gonna take a little bit of finesse and you're going to sneak the hook, or sorry, sneak the needle. You can tell I've been crocheting a long time. You're gonna sneak the needle into both of the loops at the same time. You're then gonna yarn over and then just knit as normal. And so the two stitches just became one stitch by doing that and slide that off. So by doing that, you now are going to have 19 stitches by the end of the row. So now you're going to just continue to knit the remaining of the row, which you already know how to do. Once you get to the end of the row, what I would strongly recommend is that on your little check sheet, you've just now checked off number one, like that. And then as you complete the other three rows of just knit back and forth, you're going to check those off and then you'll do the next one and you'll be back at number one again and then you'll knit the two together um, in the sequence that I just showed you, okay? So what you need to do is continually do this and what this is causing is that we're gonna have the thickness and it's gonna cause the one side of the headband to collapse, okay, by doing this. So it's only collapsing on one side and the goal is, is that we're gonna have nine stitches from 20, okay? So what I want you to do is continue to knit uh, the next three, and then once you start again, you'll do that same sequence of decreasing by knitting two together, and then do the next three and etc. until you get nine stitches, and that's where I'll see you next. So now I'm done the whole reduction. So remember you did a reduction, and then you did three more rows of reduction and three more rows. So after you reduced it to nine stitches, you had three rows. I want you at this point to really study what you're looking at here. And I want you to get a piece of spare yarn. This is really important. This here is the wrong side. So if you're looking on camera, yours, because I'm right-handed, will look the same if you're a right-handed crocheter or right-handed knitter. And I want you at this point is to mark this last row, but watch the way I do it. This is the wrong side of the work, and I can tell this because when we go to start our next section, we're going to be doing the increase, and so it's going to go flat and skinny here more, and then it's gonna build out in this direction, okay, to match the angle of this. So what I want to do is that I wanna just put a piece of yarn on the last loop like that, and I wanna drag it through, and I wanna just let it hold. This is called a stitch marker. And what this is going to tell me two things. It's gonna tell me what I need to do from this point. And it's also gonna tell me that this is the wrong side of the work. So because this is showing us the wrong side, when you turn it around, you don't see it, right? So when you are doing the next part of this project, we're gonna do two and a half inches of, of knitting from this point. So because you put the stitch marker here, you're going to be able to measure two and a half inches from here. And when it says end on the wrong side, you're gonna be ending so that you can see that this is your last uh, port going over, okay? So you've just now transferred everything over as you knit and this is here is the wrong side. So when you go to start up the next section, when we do the increase in the future, we're gonna turn it to the right side and then begin the process to do the increase on the other side. So right now, what we have to do is two and a half inches of straight knitting back and forth. So because you only have nine stitches to work with, you're gonna notice the next section, it's only two and a half inches from that particular point. And so you're just gonna do your knit stitch back and forth over and over and over until you get two and a half inches done. And then what you're going to do is put me on pause now, you'll do that. And then we'll cover on how to do the increase at that point to get ourselves back to the thickness of what we started with in the very beginning. So now do two and a half inches of knitting back and forth, ending on the wrong side. So here I am again, I have two and a half inches from this stitch marker, just going straight on up. I'm not worried about the edging. Remember, this is a beginner project. So in time, I will get more and more smoother with my tension. So this is a great uh, pattern to be able to do this. We're now going to start increasing our stitches in order to get ourselves back out to where we were down here. So what we're going to be doing together is a knit front back increase. So it's a KFB. 
And so I'm going to be demonstrating that slowly. You should be finishing on the wrong side. So I just transferred over as I got. So when we start with the right side, we're going to be turning this over and we're going to be starting so that the increase is very close to this edge so that it will match the same contour by going the other way. So back on my sheet, I went up here and I did my decrease. So now we're going to go back on the opposite way. So we're currently at nine stitches. So when we go and do our first one that we're about to do, we're going to be starting and the next one will be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And then just do your sheets, uh, sorry, lines going down, all of them and then lines going across. So what we wanna do is we wanna do the increase on the first time going through, and then the other three going, we're just gonna knit back and forth, okay? Just like we did. So I'm gonna show you that in just a moment, so I just wanna get myself mentally prepared for this, and let's begin to show you how to increase for the first time, and then the next three years knit, and then you'll increase every time you start, and this is just the stitch count number as you're increasing. So let's begin and we're going to K2. So we're going to knit the first two and you already know how to knit at this point. So you're going to knit two. And now the next one after this is going to be the knit front back increase. So I'm going to take my time and demonstrate it. So you want to start knitting it like you normally would. And you're going to take the needle and you're going to go in to where you'd always been having it go. You're going to wrap the needle and you're going to pull through, but do not slide, oops, and wrap the needle and do not slide off. Keep it on there. What you need to do is put this needle through this, but going to the back side. So you just want to just maneuver it and go through the same stitch again. Okay, and we're just going there. And then you wrap okay and then you just pull through like there and what you've just done now is that the one stitch just became two and I'll demonstrate this one more time so let me reset so you're going to knit like you normally would but you're not done do not slide off you want to go into that same one so you're going to maneuver the stitch or the the needle to go into that stitch again you want to yarn over and when you pull you're going to pull up like this and you'll capture it i'll demonstrate one more time and then i'm going to leave this for you so you're going to go into the stitch wrap Pull through, do not slide off. Maneuver it into the same stitch. It takes a bit of practice. And going into the same one, yarn over. And when you pull it through, you're gonna pull it like that. And so the two, uh, the two stitches now appear, and then you can slide off. And so now you've just done a knit front back increase. So the remaining of this row is just gonna be the knit stitch. So then this will be row number one of the four. And so the next three will just be knitting back and forth. And then the next time you'll then do the knit front, or back, our front back increase again and get yourself to the next level of stitches. So by the time I'm done this one here, there should be 10 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So I will do three more rows I'm then going to do the next one for 11. So the first row is going to be the increase. The other three are just knit back and forth. Then the next first row is the increase. And the next three are just back and forth. So I'm going to leave that in your capable hands and you'll see your project then growing outward. So I'm back and I have just finished my sequence, getting myself back out. Now it's not perfect looking. I'm okay with that. Remember, this is a beginner level project. These kind of projects are really designed for you to be able to try to master your ability of getting the stitch tension. And so I still got a little bit of work to do for myself in order to get that tension, especially when I'm turning. So I'm good. So now that I have my sequence done, the remaining of this whole thing now it has to go to 17 and a half inches. 
And so what I wanna do is that I'm just gonna take a measurement right now, I haven't done so yet, and it's currently at 15. So I need to do another two and a half inches of just straight knitting back and forth of just the 20 stitches here. And then therefore it's gonna be done. So I'm gonna do that here off camera. So continue to knit now until you get to the 17 and a half inches. With knitting, things are much, uh, it can be stretched a lot more than crochet. So you'll find that it will be really quite stretchy and it will also contour to your head perfectly. So please now complete just the knit stitches for the remaining of the distance to 17 and a half inches. And you wanna finish off on the wrong side. So remember what side this is. So you're looking at the right side and because I left my stitch marker in, I know that this is the wrong side. So when I go to finish, I'm gonna be coming up along here. So please get that two and a half inches done if it, if you have the same dimension I do, and I'll be right back in a moment. I'm back. So I now have 17 and a half inches from the very beginning. So you can see that we started off big, we went narrow. This is the wrong side. So I finished here as I transferred over to be in the wrong side. We're now going to turn our knitting needles and we're gonna do a knit uh, bind off in order to do it's called cast off it's also called a bind off it's really quite easy to do and then what we're going to do is then we're going to put it together now you can see it kind of looks rough this is a beginner level project and as i mentioned at the beginning of the tutorial the goal here is just to start working on stuff so that you can start getting more and more consistent it's a little pedestrian i will understand that but i consider myself a beginner knitter and i'm pretty proud of myself and i'll have a project that i can use for later so let's do the cast off or bind off. So let's reset the needles into our hands and let's get this done. So we're gonna turn and work and we're going to do the knit stitch as we know it. So we're gonna start our very first one. I'm getting more and more comfortable with the needles. It's been a, about two or three weeks. So I'm going to start and I'm gonna knit the very first one and slide off. I'm then going to knit the second one in and I'm gonna knit it and move it over. And now on this knitting needle, we have to take the very first one that we started and pull it over top of this one to lock it into position. And it takes a bit of fandangling to get used to doing it. So I may look a little rough doing it. So I'm gonna try to slide off and I wanna keep the this first one onto the needles. So this one goes over. So just be very careful with doing it. So technically, it's all about keeping the tension tight. So just kind of pull down on this and that will pull it backward. And so I try to keep my fingers out of the way so you can see and just kind of do that. So it's over. If you want to use a crochet hook, you probably could too. I almost considered it. So now I'm going to go to the next one and I'm going to knit. And now I'm going to take this one and go over top of that one. Again, pull this down. This is the feeding yarn. So if you pull it down, it'll provide tension. And if you pull it enough, it'll pull it so it's onto the needle. And I want you to continue to bind off or cast off all the way across. So knit, and then take the first one that's on there and bind off. And in time, you get better at this stuff. And do that all the way across and I'll be back. If you're struggling, um, join the club. <laughs> So we get my last one on here. So I want to hold and I'm going to trim the yarn that is leading, but I want to trim it long enough so I can sew this edge. So just don't be too short about it. And let's deal with that. Okay, so what I want to do is that I just want to pull up a little bit of a loop here and I want to put that strand through to lock, to lock it. Okay, and it might be easier just to get your tapestry needle out now and do that. So go through that loop with the tapestry needle, it's just easier. So that's gonna cause it to lock, so it will not come out on you. So now what we have to do is that we have to put the sides together. So you may have a seam line. So what I'm going to recommend to you is that you get the right side, which is the side that's not marked with the stitch marker, and you keep it on the inside. So this is the right side facing in. So the, the wrong side's facing out based on this. And what I wanna do is I wanna create a whip stitch across. So by going into the very first stitch here and into the stitch here, and if you go over top of the straggler, you can capture that in too, like starting strand, is you're going to whip stitch and the stitches will just jump on over. 
So you just go on to the next stitch, to the next stitch. If you're not sure, just guess. This is a beginner level project. In time, you get better and better at this stuff. So I kind of missed that, so I'll, I'll sew that in later. So I want to continue to go down the edge. And this is going to cause it on this side of the work to be a little bit bulky. And so because we're um, looking at the inside of the project right now, when we go to flip it um, properly to wear, this seam line will be hidden on the interior of your headband. So let's uh, get this sewn all the way across and I'll meet you on how to fasten off and just get rid of your tail ends, which will include the very first strand that we started with. So I'm coming right to the very edge. And before I decide that I'm gonna finish, see how it's slightly open? So just pull it open, make sure you get right edge to edge on this. So when you pull it open, that's more flat. So now I want you on the inside of this, currently what we're looking at, to just tie itself into a knot. And that'll help lock it into position. And just do one more time. Then, we're not quite done, we need to get rid of this tail and you don't want the tail hanging out when you're wearing this thing. So just dragging the stitches, or the strand, just under some stitches, do not go to the good side of the project. So this needle should not appear on the other side, which it doesn't, right? So we're going to continue and just pull through. And when you pull through the first time, make sure that it's not so tight that it's changing the shape because you won't be able to change it other, uh, later. So now you're gonna go back the other direction and then go back in the other direction one more time. So the secret to a good weave-in is to make sure that you get it three times. We cover this in all those tutorials that we do. And you're gonna to wanna to do this also with the starting strand. So once that's in, the starting strand is right there. And you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing. And so just drag it through some stitch work. So just take your time on this kind of stuff. That's your finishing. Um, you know, in crochet, people complain about having to weave in tails and stuff, but it's all part of the, the journey of the stitching as far as I'm concerned, so I don't ever worry about it. And it means that you're almost done. So it's a first world issue. Once you've done that, you can then turn it to the inside out, or sorry, the, turn it the right way, get rid of your stitch marker that indicated that you were on the wrong side, and therefore you have a headband. Now, if it doesn't look great, it's a little rough in my case, but you know what, I'm learning to knit, and so to have something real at the end of a project, um, that is great, and then once you start wearing it, any kind of inconsistency you may see go away because of the stretch, and the way that the garter stitch is, which you've just created, um, will have that nice stretch for you as well. So we hope that you enjoyed and maybe you learned something new. And in time, stuff like the edging will all come in and adjust with more practice. And that's a great day for today. Have a good one. We hope to see you again real soon. Bye-bye.